We gotta switch these speakers out again. Oh, oh my gosh, what? You remember when I said that these isoacoustics have the suction cup activity going on? Well, there you go. Ugh. Why do we actually need so many speakers anyway? What is, what is the point of so many different pairs of speakers? Why does every pro mix engineer have at least a couple pairs of speakers to listen to? It's a good question. And I got a lot of that question on my last video about the isoacoustics pucks. Let's, uh, let's address this question. Oh, there it is again, come on. I mean, it's a good thing. There we go, oh my God. Why do mix engineers have multiple pairs of monitors? What, what purpose does it serve? Should you have multiple pairs of monitors? Well, the short answer is yes, in my opinion, everyone should have multiple pairs of monitors, but how do you know which ones to choose? Depends on a couple things. So the reason that mix engineers have multiple pairs of monitors is the strategy when you're mixing is you're constantly mixing between different monitors and when there are no changes left to be made on any of them, then you know that you've reached the finish line and that the mix is going to work well to the car, to the grocery store, to the radio, to the Bluetooth speaker. Like when you've, when you've worked your way through all of these things, the more speakers you can check your mix on, the better chance it has of translating well. And that's the goal for all of us. All of us mix engineers, we want our mixes to translate and sound great everywhere regardless of what you're listening on. So for me personally, I use the Focal Trio 11 BEs but those also have a focus mode. So when I kick the foot switch, it uh, recalibrates the tweeter and the mid-range driver to be a full range speaker. It's incredibly useful. So those are kind of two speakers in one cabinet. And then I also use these Oratone 5Cs here on every mix. And I probably spend an equal amount of time between the two modes on the Focal and the Oratone. So you know, 20% of the mix, 20% of the mix, 20% of the mix. And then I'm also, I'm always always checking on these Focal Clear MG Pro headphones. These are unreal, I have a whole video about these. These are unreal, they're crazy for checking like low end and how the relationship between bass and guitar works. Man, it is hot in here. So in a second, I would like to discuss uh, helping you guys decide what kind of speakers to choose so that way you can mix through the right combination of speakers. Um, but first, this is one that I've been incorporating a lot lately that is, is new to me, but, but in a bunch of the most recent mixes, I've incorporated this Bose Bluetooth speaker. There's a bunch of comments on one of my last videos where people were talking about C being considerate of people that listen to Bluetooth speakers. I finally was like, you know, I should have a Bluetooth speaker to mix through. That should be a thing that I should do. And so I hit Sweetwater up. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. And it's a, just a totally different perspective than my monitors, than my headphones, than my cell phone. Uh, it really shines a light on some different stuff that these other speakers don't. So I've been pretty pumped to include this in my actual workflow, in my mixing and in my mastering. I'll put links in the description below for this and obviously for everything else, but I'll put links in the description below for some of the Bose Bluetooth speakers, but it's been really useful. And so uh, thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Thank you to Bose for the great Bluetooth speaker. So links in the description for everything that I'm gonna talk about, including this Bose Bluetooth speaker. Okay, let's put that. I kind of like it like up there in the listening position too. And it looks good too. I mean, doesn't it? It looks good. How do you choose which variety of speakers to, to use? Uh, I'm sure a bunch of you here watching have seen my Magic is in the mid-range mix tutorial video. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll also put that link in the description below. In that video, uh, I talked, to, one of the things that I talked about is the technique of putting a EQ across the mix bus. When you do this, you can simulate having a pair of Oratone 5Cs. This kind of really helps shine a light on the mid-range, and if you don't have the money to spend on anything, this is a way to get kind of close to the same results uh, as having a pair of Oratones 
without owning a pair of Oritones. The one thing that I would say is you want as drastically different of perspectives as possible. The most full range speaker that you can have and also the most limited speaker than, that you can have. So in addition to the technique I described in my Magic is in the mid-range video, using your cell phone is a great technique. I bounce every single mix out and I play it on my cell phone. And if I couldn't afford anything other than my regular monitors, and everyone's got a cell phone, I would check every mix on my cell phone. And then another option to add would be a set of headphones. Again, I really love these Focal Clear MG Pro headphones. They're stunningly good. However, uh, I think the important thing is that you just use a pair of headphones. So between your regular pair of monitors and any pair of headphones and your cell phone, that gives you three reference points that are all completely different. Big monitors give you the speaker in a room perspective. Headphones give you the earbud headphone perspective and it also helps eliminate your room acoustics. You can hear low end usually more accurate. In most rooms you can hear low end more accurately from headphones, a good set of headphones anyway, than you can from anything else. And the cell phone thing will help give you this ultra mid-range focused perspective. What, what's it sound like in a cheap car stereo? What's it sound like? on, you know, in the overhead of the grocery store, it's a good perspective there. And then the Bluetooth speaker, like this Bose Bluetooth speaker, is also another perspective that is like more low mid focus because all of these Bluetooth speakers, they try to make them sound as big as possible with as much low end as possible. What usually ends up happening actually is the low end, the really sub bass that, you know, the, the thunderous low end kind of comes out about like 100 hertz in those. This particular one is really good at like the 100 to 200 hertz range. It's really good at telling if something is gonna sound muddy. If something sounds muddy or woofy or boxy, it's brutally obvious on that Bose Bluetooth speaker. Uh, and so the idea is you would switch between all of these things. So that way when, it's, when it sounds good on all of them, it's good. As opposed, if you just mixed on this Bose Bluetooth speaker and you didn't mix on anything else, your mixes would probably come out harsh sounding uh, because there's, there's so, it's so thick in like the 100 to 200 hertz range. So the perspective, the differing perspectives is really important and that's why mix engineers use multiple set of monitors and that's why I think everyone should. So hopefully I gave you guys a couple ideas here that, that you can get through this without spending any money if you don't have any money. And if you are ready to take the next step and, and pick up something else, I, I cannot recommend highly enough. This is not sponsored by any of these guys. I cannot recommend the Oratones highly enough. I cannot recommend the Focals highly enough. I cannot recommend your cell phone highly enough. Use your cell phone. And then if you want an additional perspective, Check out the Bose Bluetooth speakers. Again, links for all of this stuff in the description. But what I want you to take away from this is you should be mixing, like actually mixing on multiple pairs of monitors and multiple listening devices. And your mixes will absolutely be better because of it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.